As we roll into 2018, let's reflect on the top regional news stories of last year. Jerry and Krista are here again, always interesting and fun, next on Lakeshore Focus. Welcome again to Lakeshore Focus, a weekly show highlighting the key issues, important events, and interesting people in our region. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick. I think it can be clearly slated that 2017 was an unusual and stressful year. It's over, but the history of what happened in our region and the stories that stayed with us impact us even now. What were the big stories? What touched our hearts, aroused our fears, or made us think? Here with us in our studio are two of my favorite people who happen to be journalists from our two major newspapers in this region. Krista Zivanovic with The Times and Jerry Davich with The Post. You know, this is our sixth year doing this. I didn't realize it was six. And you guys look much better than just six years old. I mean, I think you're a little older than that probably. Don't show us the earlier ones. Yeah. 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 Right. We don't want to see how we look six years so, ago. Yeah. But just think when we get to the 10-year mark or something doing this show. I would love that. Willing. Yes. I'll bring, <laughs> sure, a, I'll bring yeah, a champagne. Like <laughs> okay. So this is good. So let's just jump right into it. Top stories. You guys always give some thought Chris, to Chris, do you want to go first? No, last you, year, go, top story. you go first, Jerry. Well, you know, there's some big heavy hitters from last year, and I thought uh, Lake County Sheriff John Bunsich, of course, being... That was number one on my really? list. Really? Is that right? That's because people talk about that the most. Yep. That's why I bring it up, what people are talking <clears throat> well, about Well, it's the, the gift that keeps on giving. But oh, go my God. Ahead. In this region... <laughs> what does that mean for a journalist, the gift that keeps on giving? Well, then you get we to write had, about it more Well, more? we had the issue with the sentencing. Yes. You know, that was prolonged. And somehow the Times got involved in it because our columnist, Mark Chase, had written a column just innocently. I mean, he wasn't meaning anything negative. He just said, I'm going to publish all the names of the people who write letters of, you know, in sympathy support. and commendation yeah. and support of him right. to mitigate the sentencing. And he said, you know, that's my prerogative. Suddenly an article appears in the Indiana Lawyer about how the press is inserting itself in the news and this is egregious and shameful and we shouldn't do it. And But another professor was uh, quoted in the article at the end saying, it's all public record, and if they want to list those names, it's up to them, and what's the big deal? It was so. fresh, a bit unusual. How do we always end attention? up with a story of corruption as one of the Well, we didn't have to lead with that, because I was going to lead with national news that ripples into northwest Indiana. But it matters in this region, and people know it, and we have a bad, infamous reputation, and people don't forget that. So when they contact me, they say, when I asked for certain stories from last year that stood out to them, that's the first thing I thought. Plus, it's the Lake County. It's our sheriff. It's our sheriff who's supposed to hold us to the ideals of, of good role model. I'm going to divert do. from the script. Well, we, don't have, we don't have a script anyway. Yeah, right. So it's interesting. You made the comment about national stories. It felt like, did national stories really almost overshadow the local stories this year? Definitely. Did. It felt like And it. they rippled into our, into our region, especially because right. Trump, Trump, Trump. We can't get a day <clears throat> right. in our newspaper business without mentioning the word Trump. It's really any, true. It's crazy. And what do you mean by rippling in? How did well, it ripple in? Well, we get calls in? all the time, and I'm sure you do too, about the criticizing us for headlines that are not favorable to him or, or headlines that are too, too favorable. favorable to him yeah. or why are you putting this news in the paper or why isn't there enough? So we've always had national news seeping in or rippling into our region, Obama when he was president also, but especially now with Trump, he divided everything. And our country's divided and our region is divided and our readership is divided because of that. I mean, I've lost some readers from a, a columnist perspective and I've gained some just because of that factor. So everything has Trump's stamp on it, whether we like it or not. I mean, he, you know, he's an egomaniac maniac who loves his name everywhere, and he's got it everywhere now. And for Jerry in particular, here. Jerry has said, you know, I'm going to keep writing about Trump now, even though, you know, both papers, columnists and reporters, our bread and butter is local news, but the local people can't get enough of Trump right. either for or against. So Jerry has said, this has become a local yeah. story. And where's the and chicken in the egg right, there? Right, exactly. You know, but, it's, but it's interesting, the, the sexual harassment charges that have been all over the country 
that's one that hasn't really bled too much in the area. We haven't had surprisingly so. Big. Well, wait. You know, we, we <laughs> tend to lag behind a little. So things what are you trying might, to say, Krista? I don't know. Things 2018, might, the uh, year of sexual harassment charges Who in knows? the region. So we'll see. I don't know. You know, look at how long it took these national ones to foment. Years and years of that's cover true. ups and. You know, That's dilly true. dallying and shilly shallying, as my dad shilly used to shallying. say. And now suddenly, we learn some interesting <laughs> terms every time we do this show. From you know? Krista. They are. So, how about another story from you? Um, well, continuing on with uh, Bunsich, uh, we still have Mayor Snyder, who now has asked for his uh, trial to be put back. This is Portage Mayor. He's definitely uh, going to be the 2018 story. Yes, he's going to be the 2018 this year's big story, right. I think. And uh, so I just didn't want that to go unmentioned because not that I feel sorry for Lake County and its inordinate amount of corruption, but, you know, it it has seeped now into Porter County. So There was quite, yeah. quite a bit of press, too, on who got who became the replacement. Yes. A lot of press that right. for Bunsich. So this, this coming year, the whole Portage Mayor Snyder trial will play out, I'm guessing, and any kind of conviction or non-conviction. Is he innocent? Is he guilty? People are talking about it. The city is divided. Right. Uh, I lived there 30 years, and people are talking. Yeah, you're, you're either for Snyder and or against Snyder. And wasn't last year the Portage Council that things really got heated up toward the end of the year with the very council? Much, very you much. Know, he was so vetoing all, their raises. And right. It's, saying, it's going to come to a head this yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't know. And it has the stamp of corruption on it I again. I think the trial we'll date say. is June 4th. Yeah. For now. That's the latest. That's, that was just yeah. bumped back. Politics, yeah. right? Politics. Here we go. Politics. Yeah, that's exactly definitely. it. How about another story, Jerry? Well, you know, the um, enemy of the people, you mentioned uh, free press. We're mentioning that. And this year has been different for me as a journalist in the last 20 years because people do look at me differently. Uh -huh. When you mention you're a journalist, you're in the local mm. newspapers. Now I'm the enemy of the people. Are you putting out fake news? This again, this is national. You're so kind biased. Of, kind of biased, which <coughs> which I have to clarify on a regular basis that I'm a columnist, so everything I write is biased, so to speak. So I have to tell people that. But other reporters, of course, that's the that's the word you don't want to hear. Right. Has this been it's the, a dirty word? Has this right. been the worst year for criticism? You feel to you it personally? Has, it for has sure. for us. Too. For sure, it has. Yeah. Definitely. It just really ratcheted up where people yeah. just. Don't more skeptical, trust. more cynical, people uh, questioning things, questioning if you're biased or not biased kind of thing. Yeah, right. So that was the year of 2017. That really captured that. And for me, being a journalist, and Krista, you must talk to all the reporters. They get the same kind yeah, of thing. You have to definitely. be extra on tack for everything. And, and even the people who call, I mean, they were always testy, but now they're just downright rude for the most part. I, I can't say everyone is, but... You know, and even when I try and explain, really, I know this reporter, this reporter really does strive to be objective and fair. Oh, that's a load of, you know, hogwash. Right. This is almost like an unstory. It's like the story beneath, because who's is. really writing about it? And think about it. If you guys write about it, you're whining. Yes, exactly. Right? Right. And, and you're just trying to make right. yourself look good. Right, so I really, we right. really so, can't do that. Right. So but I brought it up on your show, though. Yeah, but this, <laughs> so this story goes really kind of uncovered in, in many ways. It does, for the most, especially yeah. locally, because local newspapers in any in any demographic don't want to bring this up. If you guys were, if you guys were on a national level, you'd probably get criticized, you know, or maybe fired or something. You never know. Of course. At the higher we're staying levels. local. Yeah, we're <laughs> staying local. <laughs> That's why we're doing that. Yeah, Jerry's more visible. I get to stay under the radar a little bit more, and I kind of prefer that. Yeah, more and do. more, I, I certainly do. Especially, do. especially 2017. The phone calls do come to me, though. I mean, and I like to kick, I like when they're really sticky, and I can kick them up to my managing editor, the executive you editor. But, you know, a lot of the time, I just have to feel them because, Everybody's busy. Well, I like Jerry's shirt because he took yeah. off his jacket before he came in. That big target's on the. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. The I always right. have it there. Right. Exactly. So you the have added Jerry, you, you and Mark Chase on in, yeah. on, in our the shop. Jacket you guys, the price you pay you're welcome for it. to it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. How about another one on your side? Uh, let me see. Well, I, you know, for me, healthcare is a big story, uh, and uh, they're they're. I think they're still going forward with the merger, Franciscan. Uh, St. Anthony right. Health Hospital in Crown Point and Methodist Hospitals. Which is controversial to yes, some people. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And um, mostly because people are concerned that that would leave Community Hospital, the only non-Catholic hospital in this general area, mm -hmm. and what that would mean, it would have implications for um, women with ectopic pregnancies, a lot of women, a lot of women issues, you know, seeking mm. abortions or for whatever reason, or mom's life, end of care. Uh, I know that, you know, the directives from the Catholic Church and Bishop Hying are that 
you know, you should not, you know, just try, it should be Part let it run its church. course, yeah. exactly. And also, I read something recently about this notion of redemptive suffering. They're not going to give you all the morphine at the very end, the end days that you want, because there's this How sense interesting. that, yes, yes. So it's all going to pass like so, out in 2018? Gender reassignment. Here we go. There We're is no predicting stories for next year. Yeah, no Another gender reset. reassignment. Uh, so we'll wow. see how that plays out. And... You know, other um, our health reporter uh, Giles Bruce uh, did research other parts of the country where they have come up with ideas with Planned Parenthood and other clinic groups that will step in and be an adjunct to the Catholic hospital, so they can still provide those services. Right. So we'll see. How this it is works really interesting. Out. This is almost again another. It's not quite an unstory, but there's you've almost got to tie the pieces together to kind of see this is a very complex story. Right, yes. it's more than just the gonna, dollars and yeah. cents yes, and will right. it, you know, will the government Morality approve and it ethics because will seep of, into this. yeah, it's yeah. not just and a dollars and views. cents and um, a monopoly story. Oh, yeah. Interesting. It's more than a business story. So that intrigued me greatly. On a related note to the medical field, how about the um, heroin and opioid crisis? That was next on my in list. In this region. Yes. We always kind of talk about it, but in 2017, I think people talked about it more than ever. The coroners, Lake County and Porter County, are coming out saying, this is a real problem. I think Porter County, County Sheriff David, David Reynolds said, this is, he made videos for this, saying, this yeah. is a problem. We have to address it. And I don't know if we're addressing it enough in this region, or will we in this year? I don't know either. I once was told by um, a heroin user, he says, being a heroin addict is a full-time job. And I don't know if our efforts to curb or curtail this problem is a full-time job in our head yet. I think we kind of just go, well, eh, it's for a subculture mm -hmm. or whatever. We don't care about it as much, but it's affecting people's lives and families who you it's think. It's middle class families. It's everybody. It's, it's kids in high school from right. good families, not just single parent homes. I know the Lake County coroner, she has finally started keeping track of the deaths from overdoses from right. opioid well, and drug Well, that's been overdoses. one of the big stories is, is this number, this high number right. where they're going to set records. You know, we set records in 2017, I think, for the highest amount of overdose deaths. Right. You know? yeah. So, yeah, this is a huge, huge story. So it was. I know at the end of last year, Governor Holcomb did speak at Teebles and did say he agrees that this is a problem we really need. We're so far behind other states as far as detox centers, rehab centers, where to send people. I know Portage just recently, as did Griffith, their police stations are looking at it less and less as a criminal issue and more and more as a health issue. Right. And if someone comes in with an overdose issue or a problem, they won't arrest them. They will try and help them find a bed in a hospital. Well, they're using the word epidemic, which is really interesting. It, it at what level do you have to be to be an epidemic? Well, and here's the thing. Our local hospitals are completely unprepared for this. They, When someone comes in with an overdose, they get them out as soon as they can. Um, if they admit someone, they have no way to... Um, detox them. It's just not anything that's on their radar yet. And I think that's the missing link that might be the next big story this year. And that word sounds like hyperbole, Keith, and you say it, because it's an epidemic and it sounds right. like that, but it really is in this region an epidemic. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not something that the media has generated. This isn't us. Right. This is the coroners right. saying this is an epidemic. This is the sheriff saying it's and an epidemic. And people coming to us, families saying, please. Please help us. Yeah, get the word mm -hmm. out. Yeah. It's to get, remove the stigma. Because yes, the stigma remove contributes the stigma. Exactly. Again, it's interesting how these stories all tell together because look at all the reports that came out this year about how far Indiana is behind and in care for seniors and care for the mentally ill and and just we're behind on a lot of these things we our ranking is real low we're at the bottom so it's, again it's tied back mm -hmm. to this that infrastructure that doesn't really exist here to help people except for being the fattest and the least fit then Indiana is always in the top 10 <laughs> and, we not still are on, and not great on college education rates yeah, either right. uh, graduation rates. sometimes we yeah. do live down to our stereotype <laughs> That's right. we really do <laughs> but you got another one you know there's a story that really punched us all in the gut and I just heard from somebody last week about this mentioning to me the Hobart father who shot and killed his own daughter he was showing gun safety to his boys, mm. I think, in the Hobart home, and he shot and killed his daughter. Uh, her name was Olivia Hummel. What and was she four, six? Yeah, around. I think she was six. Yeah. yeah, she was very young, and of course, it was just one of those tragic accidents. Yeah, but this he was devastated, as far as you could tell of, from the reports. Of course, and this is the kind of story that sticks <clears> with <throat> us. And when I ask readers, you know, think of 2017, they think of this story. Sadly enough, I mean, then you have the whole gun issue coming up, and the gun safety and gun rights, and it all again. You start with a, an incident. Something that happened is just a tragedy, and all this politics seeps into it, Keith. And that's 2017 in a nutshell. 
no matter what happens, politics seeps into everything and kind of takes over this incident. You know, it's interesting. It seems like in the previous years when we talked about that, there was always several of those kind of heart heart stories or stories that really kind of tore you up. Right. And you're right. It's about the only one that, that really pops out at me at the moment. It does. Well, that and teen suicide. Uh, there was a movie, yeah. a series called 13 Reasons Why that came out, and we had some teen suicide. That's another unstory that we are yeah, not allowed to suicides, flesh out. Yeah. I've written about it several times through the years, and every time I do, I hear from people who are surviving members of a teenage suicide victim. But if, if you look at an obituary, and I'm, I'm bad at the point, when I read a, an obituary of a kid, like a teenager, and it doesn't list they the cause of death, it. what do I always well, think of first uh, thing? Well, th yeah. this is in the same category as all the overdoses. Nobody's going to write a big story about right. an overdose. Right. I mean, it, uh, well, and here's the thing. My, our ed, we, as editors, are sensitive to, not to interrupt you, but Carmen did a story earlier in the year about a young man who killed himself, Hispanic. Kim Carmen Hammond, McCollum. McCollum. Mm -hmm. And she's our education reporter. And we really agonized about how to present it, and we eventually put it on A1, we talked to the family, but the concern was you now don't want to prompt copycats. So you want to put it out there periodically, give people a laundry list of places where they can go, families, kids, resources, but then you're always so afraid what Without if- glamorizing it in some form right, or fashion. That right, that somehow this is going to give someone else now an idea and start an epidemic or a minor. You know, with, with this criticism of the press, this heavy criticism of the press this past year, do you feel you've changed in any way what you're doing? I mean, it's, it's follow up to oh, that yeah. comment yeah. about how backwards. you're looking yes. at much stories. more sensitive to uh, parties oh, we weren't sensitive photos enough to. Photos and yes, yeah, absolutely. Children, juveniles, yes, yes. All that has to come into play now. Is it a good thing? No, <laughs> okay. I don't think it is. I think it's a needed thing. It's a needed thing, yeah. but I, do, I think maybe we, we've been, if, what aggravates me is if people only knew how we agonize every day about how we're going to present things, how long we're going to make the story, how many people we're going to talk to, well, that's how we're going to couch you, you it. You people are heartless, you know. We, right? Yeah, exactly, right. you know, exactly. Biased, it, all that stuff. Right. <laughs> you know, Keith, some things from last year that were that were left us, I want to bring attention to, is the No, no Gary Air Show to Lake Michigan. That was a big deal. People complained about mm -hmm. that. We Hopefully this year we'll have the air show again. And also Ernie Tallarico's International Human Cadaver, Cadaver uh, Pro Section Program at yeah. IUN. That was pulled the plug on, and I don't know why. It's kind of mysterious, but it's yeah. gone. And that was a big deal. People from around the world would come to IUN, to this region, to study and model that program. And I even took part in it once for a column. Mm -hmm. So these are things that we're here and not here. Like, who drives past Route 30 and you don't see the Radisson Hotel there anymore? Right. And it's like, Star Plaza, they, they yeah, pulled you, the plug a second time. For yeah, good. so Star Plaza is going to be gone yeah. also for sure. So you, yeah, and you know, that's, our, our that landscape symphony, is changing. That holiday pop symphony was so bittersweet. There was such a pall. You know, Kirk Musbrett, so adorable. He tried to make it so upbeat and really have everyone, make everyone have fun. But there was just a pall over the whole thing because... We know it's gone. Yeah. So now all we have there is memories playing for us. Mm -hmm. That's all we're going to have when we drive past there. Same with the Radisson. You yeah. go, there's a big hole. That, yep. We know there's going to be a future there. It's supposed to be a hotel and a complex and all that. But right now, for older people like us who live decades and you've yeah. been there and took your families there, it's kind of gone. So I think that was one of, the, one of the ones on your list, right? About, this, yeah. about the hotel and everything yeah. going down. It, loss. It, loss is a big one for me personally and yeah. as a journalist. It, right. I don't know if it's just because I'm getting older or if there is more loss yeah. this past year, last year. I don't know. Do you think there's more loss this past year? No, I think we're, it's affecting us differently, I think. I think it's the same, but our sensibilities have changed. That's what I think. And I think age does play a role with it, Krista. Yeah, maybe. I talk to a lot of readers who are older readers, and their perspective of things is different than when I talk with younger kids or students and I go to high schools and talk to them. They're hopeful and idealistic and can't wait to conquer the future. And a lot of the older people are going, well, I'm just tired of this world and I'm unhappy with the country <laughs> and I don't want any part of the future. Glad I'm going out and Glad I'm coming going out. in. That's exactly it. <laughs> it sounds funny, but it's so true, Keith. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. has, has there been any story that, that, really, that you really enjoyed working on this year for either one of you? That's a good question. You know, just, I mean, just like I really enjoyed researching, writing, interviewing, talking, making decisions about this specific story. Well, you know, I enjoyed the women's marches that were happening in this region a lot. And um, people were joining and people were getting vocal. This is also the, the ripple effect from Trump getting into office, is that it woke everybody up. And everybody was kind of complacent and eh, Hillary's going to win and Trump's going to lose. And then it didn't happen that way. And they go, wait, hold on, I've got a vote. I have to get out there and be active again. I have to walk and do picket signs and demonstrations, and people are doing that all over. I went down to downtown Valparaiso, and I see these people picketing and demonstrating 
for causes they didn't care about last year or two years ago or five mm -hmm. years ago. I enjoy seeing that and happy. It's like, and the people who won feel so vindicated and thrilled and a little yeah, bit surprised. Yeah, because they felt and, disenfranchised before. Right. Like nobody's paying attention to their voice. Right. So now you have this active engagement of democracy in action locally. It's fun That's to watch That's a positive that. way to look at it. Yeah. It is. That I enjoyed that, right? That is a positive way. How about you? Is there a story you worked on or something you followed or that was just you found some joy in or enjoyment? Well, this is going to sound so terrible because I take joy in such you know, despair and desperation. I mean, that's what I love bringing to the forefront. Um, I worked uh, last year really closely with our health reporter on Indiana's infant mortality rate is among the highest in the nation. And he really got down and dirty into the story. He won a, a, a scholarship to go study for a week at USC. They have a big health journalism program there. And But looking at the solutions, he got to travel throughout the state because they gave him the money. And there really are some interesting programs throughout the state looking at solutions and how to fix this. But there also, we really found some things uh, as far as pollution and other things and poverty. Uh, that it, it felt really good bringing that to light, that maybe we could so actually solve something and move forward on something. We'll see if anything comes I of like it. I like that word joy, though, Keith. You mentioned the word joy. There's no joy in Mudville because the Cubs <laughs> yeah. lost, as we all know. And we, were all hope we all just thought, oh, they're going to roll again and get it, and they didn't make it And that it was again. the big story last year. That was year. a big story, of course. That was the big story last year. So we're down here to the end. What haven't we covered, again, significant stories you think that we should have really paid attention to? I think we should pay attention to the illegal immigrant issue that's taking place. They're still flying them out of Geary Airport, I believe, on a weekly or monthly basis, and people are protesting that. Yeah. It's only going to get more increased and more intensified in 2018. We have to address illegal immigration somehow. We're not doing it as, as a nation, so we have to do it kind of locally, and it's dividing people, this issue is. So that's something we're going to look at for 2018 for sure. I would like to see us, we did pass taxes and everyone was all on board with it and Republicans became the new uh, group to make taxes lovable again so that we can fix our roads <laughs> over the lovable. next 20 years. And I would like to see, I was shocked when I went to go get my license plate that I had to pay $80 instead of 57 mm -hmm. because Munster adopted a wheel tax. I'd like to see us have the same joy in raising taxes a little to support schools. Interesting. That's interesting because as a national issue, it's on the other side of this. So, right. but at the local level, we're having to do Pass we referendums think it's great. And things. Yeah. Well, and the passing the referendums, that's a whole nother can of shrimp cocktail we can get into later to quote Rudy Clay, um, the late Rudy <laughs> the Clay. The late great. late great Rudy Clay. But yeah, I think that we really need to look at, you know, leveling that and balancing that out. We're still too close to New Year's. She's talking about shrimp cocktail. Yeah. Anyway, and, you know, makes you wonder what she has. Everything had, relates right? to food. Don't even get me started. That's, you know. So any, predi any other predictions for this year? Coming up. This year we coming up, I think uh, someone else in the region, a uh, public official, will be indicted uh, for public corruption charges, even though you think it's unheard of. And how can that happen with all the corruption we've had? And you have Bunsich and you have Snyder on the, on the docket now. I think somebody else will be indicted because the, the feds, once they're on you, they are on you. And they're going to find something. And the new the guy thing. pledged, Thomas yeah. Kirsch, the new U.S. attorney for the Northern District in Hammond, pledged he's going to keep it going. Just like David Kaplan. He's Kapp got did. a good staff, yep, and he's going to keep David They're here Kapp's to find momentum. that. And I think oh, they're yes. going to find it. So that's what I think is going to happen in 2018. It's, it's going to be like, like they used to be scared of if Mike Wallace is here to see you. It's yeah, like the exactly. FBI is here to check your records. Like, man, you are in trouble. Yeah, the feds don't mess around. Yeah. So how about you? Anything you predict this coming year? Going to be a story out there? I think more loss. We forgot to mention VU, the law school. That's right. Really revered, well-respected right. law school, not just in the region And we'll here. have to see how that plays out. Yeah. Okay. We, I don't know what's going to happen, but... Well, this is always a fun show. I enjoyed having both of you here. It's always show. interesting to reflect on this. Thanks for being here. Really it appreciate really it. It was really fun. Thanks, Keith. Thanks. Well, that wraps up the top stories of 2017, and 2018 is already ticking away. Every year when I do this show, I think about the media and the many great men and women who work within this industry. I know there are some not-so-great ones. Parts of the media really do deserve criticism for bias, sensationalism, and just beating some stories to death. We have watched a number of key personalities in the press fall this year through scandal and misconduct. To start the new year off right, let's focus on the positive. 
There is an army of good people who are providing news and stories with objectivity, research, dedication, diligence, and compassion. I am proud to be part of the public broadcasting family who clearly fall into that category. Most importantly, let's be thankful that we live in a country with a free press, allowing us to be given information which helps us be educated and engage citizens. It is easy to complain about the media, and we often do. How about a resolution for 2018? Vow to thank someone in the press after you have viewed, heard, or read something that you find value or really appreciated. Thanks for watching our first show of the new year. Our resolution at Lakeshore PBS is to continue to bring great shows on Lakeshore Focus to our viewers. We want to educate and inspire you. We want to make you think and take positive, productive action. We know we are doing a good job when we hear from you. So email us or access me and the Lakeshore staff through the website. Remember, if you miss a show, and I know you will, they are available through the website and on YouTube. Tell your friends who may have missed this great show, they can still watch it and be enlightened and entertained by Jerry and Krista. Now, to lead the charge, let me practice what I preach. Thank you, Krista, and thank you, Jerry, for being two of those dedicated media people who are living the values and really contributing to a free press in America. That's very kind of you, Keith. Thank you so much. We appreciate that very much. We dinosaurs, do. we're very appreciative yes, of that. We do. Well, I appreciate, and you aren't dinosaurs, so <laughs> you'll be back again next year. All right, we will. Thanks. All right. Happy New Year. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick saying make a positive difference in our world today.